Now, what you just heard was an arrangement made by me of a very famous Russian folk song, though you might know it better as the Tetris theme. All of the parts of that were played by a single instrument, the trombone. But how does the trombone work exactly? How does a player like myself produce music from this mess of metal tubes? Well, let's take a look at how the trombone works. Let's start at the very source of the sound, the player and the mouthpiece. Now, in order to produce sound on most brass instruments, you have to do what's called buzzing into a mouthpiece. This little thing. And it sounds like this. Not very musical, right? But that's just part of the instrument. Now, what that does is it's not only bringing air into the instrument, but it's also causing it to vibrate. And as you know, vibrations are what cause sound. Anyway, the vibrating air then moves into the next segment of the instrument the slide. Now this is the part of the instrument that determines the pitch of the notes that you are playing. Within these metal tubes, the air is vibrating from the mouthpiece, and those vibrations are causing waves to happen, which translate into sound. Now how a slide works is you can either pull the slide out or bring it back in, and doing so will either lower the pitch of the note or bring the note to a higher pitch. The reason this happens is by bringing out the slide you are then lengthening the distance that the air has to travel, which will lower the sound. Then by doing the opposite, bringing the slide back in, you will actually be shortening the distance that the air has to travel, thus bringing the sound up. Then after this part of the instrument, the air travels to the final part, the bell. Now this part of the instrument serves two main purposes. The first being that it amplifies your sound. The widened part of the bell adds a considerable amount of volume and it pushes your sound forward. Now this second purpose can't be served by all trombones. Your trombone must have a certain attachment which luckily mine does so I can demonstrate to you, but it can actually add another way to change the pitch of your note. Now on most trombones you have a single tube. You have this one, the main one. You know, the slide attaches right here, the air goes through this tube, and then out the bell where your sound is then amplified. As you can see on mine, I have quite a few more tubes, three to be exact. Now, as it is right now, the air that would be traveling through this would continue to go through this main tube and out the bell, like a normal trombone. But what I have are these little triggers. Now, when I engage one of these triggers, it will open up one of these valves. That will force the sound to travel through one of these secondary tubes before then going back through the main tube. Now what that does is it actually lengthens the distance that the air must travel so the notes you are playing will be lower. Now this is really useful for trombone players when we have to play notes that are really out there with the slide because instead what we can do is we can bring the slide in but engage one of the triggers. That way we will be playing the same note but in a different position. All right. Those are the basics of how one trombone can operate by itself. Now let's take a look at how multiple trombones can interact with each other through harmonies. Now a harmony is simply defined as when two or more notes are being played at the same time against each other. There are two main ways of categorizing these harmonies. The first, consonant harmonies. As you can tell from the example, consonant harmonies are usually really pleasant to listen to and they don't clash all that much. The one I used in my example is known as a perfect fifth. You have your root note, and then you have the perfect fifth. Now, the other type of harmony is known as a dissonant harmony. As you can hear from this example, it's quite the opposite of consonant. They're very unpleasant, and they clash a lot. The one I use in my example is known as a minor second. You have your root note, and your minor second. Anyway, now that we know a little bit about basic harmonies, we can move on to what are called chords. Now, a chord is basically just combining harmonies. It is defined as any three or more notes being played together. Now, by this definition, you could take any three or more notes, put them together, and call it a chord. Yes. But will it always sound that good? Probably not. So let's stick to some simple chords. The one we're gonna look at today is known as a major chord. So in order to build this chord, we need to start with a root note, just like you would for any other chord or harmony. For this example, I'm going to be taking B flat. From that root note, now we must find the major third. In this case, from B flat, the major third is D. Now we need to find the last note of the chord, and to do this, we go back to the root note, and then we have to find the perfect fifth. In this case, the perfect fifth from B flat is F. Now we have all three notes. We have our B flat, our D, and our F. Now when we combine them together, we are given a 
major chord. Pretty cool to hear how the harmonies interact with each other, right? Anyway, that's really all you need to know for the basics of how trombone works. In simplest terms, it's just a player forcing air to vibrate through metal tubes. And through that, you're giving music. Crazy, right? Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. So enjoy my arrangement of the Tetris theme one last time as I walk out. Anyway, see you guys. Thank you.